to bring it back. <laughs> and there's the gaze, and I'm like, oh, Bruce, don't hit me. And he's like, did you just ask me to give a fucking performance that I gave 25 years ago? And I said, well, I mean, it was season two, so technically it was 24 years ago. He goes, Kevin, I can't believe it. This may top the fucking cake, man. Did you really fucking, how many actors do you go up to and ask them to do something they did a quarter of a century ago? And I was like, you know why? Well, and Ben's kind of young, so I haven't had the chance. But when I get there, I was like, Kevin, get back, get back to the, to the chair. I was like, I will, I'm sorry. I was like, we're going to go one more. He's like, you want to go one more? To get back to the chair. I was like, I'm going home. Back to the chair, my eyes were glassy and shit like that. And Adam Siegel sitting next to me. He's like, "What's the matter?" I was like, "Nothing." <laughs> and we roll, and I'm watching the take, and you know, it's just Bruce doing Bruce, Bruce making his choice and shit like that. Doesn't look like the thing that I was talking about, but I was like, yeah, you know, if he's happy, he's fucking happy. I'm good. I got what I needed and shit. And this was just fucking pie in the sky. I'm asking that dude, fucking. She's right, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> and then I'm watching the monitor and something magical happens. So all of a sudden, Bruce Willis goes away and, and Jimmy Monroe, the character he plays in this movie, went away. And there, for about 12 seconds straight, was David Addison. <laughs> Motherfucker dropped the performance straight into David Addison territory. It was beautiful, it was touching, it was everything that I fucking hoped it would be. And I couldn't even utter cut when the tape was done because I was just so like. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael Pitt looks at me, check the gate. I go, and I look to Bruce and he goes, and I said, yes, Michael, check the gate, check it, check it, check it. <laughs> and I was sitting there like, oh my God, oh my God. And Adam Siegel, one of the person in the movie, leads over and he's just like, I could have sworn, man, I go fucking, maybe I'm not. Hi, because I sit next to you all day, but <laughs> I could have swore fucking Willis dropped a little David Abs. I was like, he did drop a little David Abs. <laughs> he goes, what do you mean? I was like, I went over there and fucking asked him. He goes, you went over and talk to him? I was like, I didn't even just talk to him, dude. I went over and asked him for something. He goes, you asked him to do a David Addison? I was like, I mean, you know what? Fine, I didn't ask that motherfucker. I went over and said, bitch, give me David Addison. <laughs> and he fucking corrected shit. And told him, oh shit, he's coming. Shit. <laughs> so me and Adam just sitting in their chairs and Bruce going, Typical Bruce walking on the set, just doing that fucking very cool Bruce Willis stroll, kind of eye on the world and shit like that. Looking around the room, there's me and Adam sitting there. He's just sauntering, walks right past us, turns to us, and he goes, that was for you, Kev. <laughs> It's like, the rock is this small, the hoop is this big, and it's all fucking mad. Fuck Chris Tucker, it's my time. <laughs> Sean Williams got Kim Loader from Air turned in the best performance I think of his life. He's basically like a live action Bugs Bunny. <laughs> and you know, and Bruce fucking brought it, man. He brought the fucking Willis. He brought the Willis grin and shit like that. And he fucking gave me eventually everything that I asked for and then some more. The movie turned out really cool because of it. I sit there and watch the movie and I go like, God, how did it fucking, it doesn't look like anything we've ever done. It seems to have pushed and it doesn't look, doesn't have the heart of Chasing Amy. If everybody's looking for Chasing Amy, you're gonna, don't look for it. It's called Cop Out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And prior to that, it's called A Couple of Dicks. It's, it ain't fucking Schindler's List or A Couple of Schindler's. It's literally <laughs> fucking Cop Out. So it's a popcorn movie. It's totally fine. It's like Lethal Weapon. Uh, uh, Beverly Hills Cop, 48 Hours, uh, Die Hard, of course. I like to say it's like Lethal Weapon with 60% less action. <laughs> but it is what it is, chiefly because Bruce pushed us in the way he did. And, and, and I thank him for it all the time. It's really, I don't know, it's a cool piece of work. And at the end of it all, man, there it is. It's like, some people have asked me, why'd you even do it? Why the fuck do you want to make a movie like that? I was like, because, you know, for years I fought it and shit like that. For years I was like, ah, I just do my shit. You know, I'm fine, happy, do my shit. 
I came to a place where, like, you know, after Zack and Mary, I was all bummed. I didn't want to write a movie then because it just would have been a movie about, you know, this fat dude who made a movie people didn't go see enough. <laughs> <laughs> so suddenly, like, Cop Out kind of came along, and, and it just appealed to me as, like, the movie I kind of grew up watching and shit. Also, like, reminded me of my father. Like, it's the movie if I would have made it, my father was alive, my father would have been like, oh, you do make movies and shit. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know because it just always seemed like you and your friends talking about pussy and Star Wars. <laughs> Does it count as a movie, Kevin, if all you do is talk about other movies? You know, I'm not sure. This has a plot and guns and Bruce Willis and fucking, you know, looks like a movie and shit. My old man would have been like, ah, you do make movies. Good for you, Kevin. So sentimentally, it was in there. But also, there was just a piece of me that was just like, I was 16 years old, man, and somebody came back in time and said, hey, would you like to fucking direct a Bruce Willis movie? As I said, I'm looking at the hour, I'd be like, whose fucking dick do I have to suck to make that happen, man? And it's just like, I'm 39, I don't know, I'm getting old, I don't know how much time I have left and shit. I lead a very sedentary lifestyle, eat nothing but processed sugar foods. So, I don't know how much, you know, one day I'm just gonna be like, hey, we're making a movie, oh! one of those movies where it goes like, because that's his move, like Bruce's signature move. He figured out that like, most cops don't carry their guns like this. That's total pussy. All cops carry their guns. Well, no, that's this. Bruce is this. Most cops carry their gun before Bruce, I think, kind of like. And Bruce and Dyer was the first one to decide that if you're going to hold your gun, hold it down because there might be something coming at you from the floor behind you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the movie turned out pretty fun. Go see it. It's fun. I, I enjoyed making it and whatnot. It was a real adventure. And uh, I feel like I kind of grew as a filmmaker doing it. And I don't know, Bruce Willis movie. I remember at the end of that one DVD, I was just like, I'll never have a fucking Bruce Willis movie. I mean, apparently I didn't, but somebody else did, and I borrowed theirs and got to do it. So, yay. <laughs>